Ah, ho, ho. Well, partner, it was a tough ride, but at least we're safe. Yeah. <laughs> All right, boys, throw down that strong box. Do what he says. We don't have no key. All right, now shoot the lock off. <laughs> you got a doctor in there? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's not easy being the funniest man in the world, but here's a man who has to live with it on a daily basis. Here I am, Tim Conway. Thank you. Can you see okay up there? Good. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a wonderful show for tonight. Well, actually, we have a wonderful show all the time, so tonight is no exception. But tonight is exceptionally yeah. wonderful. seen my pigeon? <laughs> Excuse me, uh, I don't know exactly. What are you looking for and what are well, you I'm, doing I'm here? I'm looking for my pigeon. <laughs> it's obvious. He, he flew in here. He's a little, little gray sucker. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he's got this white ring around his neck and he answers to the name of Floyd. <laughs> well, look, well, we're, we're trying to do a television show right here, yeah. right now. So if you don't mind, you mind, huh? You see, here, Pidgey, Pidgey. Here, Pidgey. I think your pigeon has permanently flown its coop. Look, lady, this happens to be a television studio, all right? Mm. We're doing a television show. Yeah. It's lucky for you I came along. You know? Uh-huh. Yeah, show business is my life, you know? Is that right? <laughs> Yesterday, they told me I would not go far. <laughs> and... Here I are. <laughs> My brother and me, we was born in trunks. Mm. I still got mine on. You want to see it? No. <laughs> there, yeah, that's fine. We just. Oh, yeah. Show business. I paid my dues, you know. I have hung my tux on a nail. Mm hmm. Yeah. I can understand that. I roared at the grease paint and I smelled like a crowd. <laughs> I come from a show business family, you know? My mother had this uh, elephant act. <laughs> um, you know, and they go, Poo! My father, he got this act in the circus, you know, where he stuck his head in the lion's mouth. <laughs> one show. <laughs> and then my mother, she took over, you know, and then she stuck her head in the lion's mouth. You know. And that only lasted one show. <laughs> the lion died. <laughs> Well, so then I got my big break, you know, and they asked me if I'd be this human cannonball, and I said, would I, would I? And because I was born with gunpowder on my feet, you know? Right. I, so this is the way it worked. Are you listening? I'm trying. Good. Yes, I'm trying. Yeah. So look at me. I'm drunk. So anyhow, I was supposed to be fired into this net 30 blocks away, you see. But... Unbeknownst, <laughs> they took down that net and they built this drive-in movie. <laughs> so 
God. I went through that sucker head first. Pow! And nobody found me for three whole days. People used to drive up and hang the speakers on my feet. I saw Brubaker 47 times. It was a horrible accident, you know. I broke every bone in my body. <laughs> Except one. You want to see no, it? No, I don't. Yeah, it was awful. The doctor, he, he took one look at me and he said, oh, you'll never sing again. Mm. <laughs> but I'm going to show him. Because tonight, I'm gonna be on this show and I'm gonna sing again. Uh -huh. America's sweetheart is back. <laughs> Hit it, guys. A little louder. <laughs> the stars at night are big and bright. Oh! <laughs> I guess maybe you better take it. <laughs> Where the hell do you go? Yeah. <laughs> it's the Bird Lady Show with Patty Roswell, Miriam Flynn, Dick Orkin, and Bert Curtis, and the Don Fight and Dancer. And now here's a 30-second news brief, a half a minute of news headlines, sports and weather with Dick and Burke. This is News Brief, all the latest news, weather and sports in a 30-second news update. A new summary of all the latest news events that encompass the world around us. Today, news the... from here and abroad. <laughs> news that daily affects you and the nation. Today, in... News that illuminates and alters our history. The top story I'm today... Dick Orkin with over 12 years of news experience reaching from the nation's capital to the far corners of the world. Thank you, Dick. The big story... Winner of the Stanton William News Award for the last three years running. Now, here is the news. <laughs> Today, this has been a 30-second news brief. <laughs> you got three minutes. Hello, Helen. Beware of the swan. He's flying at dawn. <coughs> what are you talking about? I'm talking in a rhyming code. Why are you talking in code? Because we're planning the breakout. No, 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 no. You don't, you don't have to talk in code anymore, Helen. No, you see, I went before the parole board yesterday, and I got great news for you. I got everything we need for the breakout right here. No, no, Helen, you don't understand. See, now listen to me, Helen. Helen, they're letting me out. Isn't this the cutest? The candle's really dynamite. <laughs> Helen, have you been driving nails with your head again? <laughs> listen, Helen, the parole board has granted me a parole. Is this going to interfere with our breakout plans? <laughs> Don't even say that word. If they even thought that I was thinking about that breakout, they'd give me another five years. If they catch... Put... You got one minute. Uh -huh. <laughs> Helen, listen to me. Now, we don't have time. We have to go over the plans for the breakout. Helen, 
There isn't going to be any breakout. Well, I'm not if you don't listen to me. Now, you tie in a uh, rope here and you throw it over the wall. Then when I see you climbing over the wall, I pull up with the car and we make our getaway. Helen, listen to me. Tomorrow, I'm going to be on the outside. Oh, well, then we'll need two ropes. <laughs> Why would you need two ropes? Well, one to climb in and one to climb out. <laughs> Why would I want to climb into prison? Well, how else are you going to get out? <laughs> Have you been smoking the drapes again? <laughs> Listen, you got to get that out of here and fast. If they catch me with this thing in here, they'll give me another five years. Now, I mean it. Get out of here and get out of here fast. All right, all right. But let me tell you one thing before we I go. You know the woman that lives next door that has the German Shepherd? The woman has to go out of town, something about her sister having trouble with her husband, and she asked me if I'll take care of the dog and the puppies. So I thought, well, I can't get in too much trouble. But anyway, you should have seen that dining room rug after the puppies and all, you know. So I called up this place, and I said, listen, I'm going to bring the rug in uh, to have you clean it. And he said, fine, madam, or we can come out to the house. I said, oh, no, you don't. I know you'll charge me a lot more for a house visit. He said, well, what kind of a rug is it? I said, it's wall to wall. And he said, well, we'll still have to come out to the house. I said, listen, mister, before I pay you for a house visit, I'll rip the carpeting up and put down uh, tile. And you know what else I said to him? I said, just put that in your smoke and pipe it. <laughs> Get this thing out of here and get it out of here now. I'm telling you, if they even think that I'm talking about a break, they're going to give me another five years. And another thing, why in your wildest imagination would I take this rope and this dynamite, blow a hole in the laundry bin, take the rope, throw it up over the wall, and then crawl down over the wall and have you meet me in a getaway car? Don't you know that these guards are liable to... If they even thought that, if this guy even thought that we were talking about, you, you know if we were talking about an escape here with this guy, dynamite. Uh, <laughs> I'd get up. I'd, get, I'd probably get another uh, five years. Oh, uh, come on. Uh, see you next week, Helen. Yeah, I'll bring two ropes. Don't worry. Well. <laughs> Let's have them. Come on, that's everybody. Let's get them out of here. Come on. Yeah. Right. Oh, wow. Uh, I got it. We're, we're got it. Dear John, it's been 12 long years since you joined the army and went away. When your letters stopped coming 10 years ago, I knew something was wrong. Oh, would I give to see your face again, to be near enough to touch you, to touch your face, and then slide my hands down to your neck and squeeze every ounce of air out of your worthless body for the pain you put me through. But I couldn't do it. Because I still love you and miss you and only wish you were here to share in the inheritance that I've come into. <laughs> Despite all the suffering you've caused me, I could forgive you in a minute if you just bring me flowers like you used to. And I know you'd forgive me for squandering all that money on Harold and the Johnson twins and Louis the Leech, and the Rams Taxi Squad, and two tall McGreevy. Oh, hon, I know I've wasted the money terribly. Well, I spent $200,000 on that red Chinese vase alone. Oh, I have some money left. 
but it's not much. Only four or five million. <laughs> and I wanted to save that little bit for when you come back. But you know how I am about banks. So I thought I'd hide the money in the couch and protect it with a rat trap. <laughs> was only a decoy. So for safekeeping, I hid the money in the bottom of your golf bag. But just in case anyone should try to steal it, I hid a container in there with a deadly salmon sucker in it. <laughs> One bite from that fish and you're dead within two minutes. <laughs> Unless you quickly drink the antidote which I keep on the top shelf of the closet. <laughs> right next to the furniture polish. <laughs> and behind the oven cleaner. <laughs> In the little blue bottle. I wanted you to know all this because this money will be yours if anything should happen to me. <laughs> Nobody's gonna believe this junk. I'm no good at writing novels. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Don Crichton Dancer. But you come from a long line of artists, and you love the challenge of the open road. And at the end of that road comes tiller time. <laughs> the best quenching beer a man can drink. You paint because it's a way to express yourself. All the emotions come out, unraveling your cares like a sock losing its darn along life's long, lengthy, troubled highway of life. Yes, you make a clear, bold statement, definitely daring. Nothing middle of the road will do. That's why you won't settle for anything less than a tiller beer. Yes, painting's in your blood. So you push yourself to keep on going, giving people what they want to see. 
He'll lead them, showing them a way to reach places they've never seen before, or once they've seen, don't recognize it from what it is. But you know what it is, you're just not telling. Then you reach for a tiller, because tiller takes you places. A land of great taste and enjoyment. That's tiller beer. Others will try to follow in your footsteps, searching to find that path you, and only you, have pioneered. And so you paint on, creating something that will leave the public gasping. Because you've been there. You know where to draw the line. You know what side to stand on. You know when to turn left and right, when to yield, and slow down for deer crossings. Then at the end of the day, you know what your reward is. A tiller beer, that cool, satisfying drink that leaves you smacking your lips for more. You'd like to quit, but you can't. Not as long as that concrete canvas stretches out before you. It's you and your brush. Stroke, 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 straight as an arrow towards the horizon. Down that highway of life, that leads to Tillet. Oh. Well, that was one tough trip, partner, but we made it. Sure was, yeah. Hi, nine. Hi, nine. All right. What? Hi, nine. Hello, nine. We can't understand the word you're saying. Hi, guy. Hi, Your driver speaking. You'll be taking off momentarily. We'll be traveling 11 miles an hour. Want a drink? Contact your steward. Now go on to move out. Yeah. <laughs> Due to mechanical failure, flight delay. Well, that's almost our show for tonight. And I say almost because we still have some flubs that we're going to show us tonight. I mean, we're not perfect here on this show, you know. But first, I'd like to thank my cast. Maggie Roswell, <laughs> Miriam Flynn, Dick Orkin, and Bert Curtis, and the Don Crichton Dancers. And of course, these aren't the only people to be grateful to. I'd also like to say a big thank you to some of the little people. Paul Williams, <laughs> Mickey Rooney, and all the jockeys at Santa Anita. Thank you very much. of the preceding program were recorded before a live audience. This is your dummy announcer speaking. <laughs>